Greetings everyone, I'm Dr. Anth. In this video, I will describe a workshop on forensic anthropology in which I participated. Back in the early 1990s, long before the TV show Bones, I was a PhD student in physical biological anthropology. My advisor and his archaeology colleague decided it would be fun to offer the state police a weekend workshop on forensic anthropology. They asked me and three other grad students to assist them in this adventure. The workshop would be on a weekend in October, but we began prepping for it in May. The four of us grad students all had experience in archaeology. Our job in May was to go out into a field owned by my advisor and for each of us to find a place to dig an oval pit. We made sure that our pits were far away from each other's pits. Once the pit was dug, we placed a few objects such as buttons, coins, and in my case, a deer leg bone. I placed the deer bone so that it pointed towards the top of the pit. Once each of us had placed the items in our pits, we made a map of where the items were located in the pit. Then we refilled the pit with dirt and tamped it down. The reason for doing the pits in May for a weekend in October was to give time for the vegetation to grow and hide the pit outline from easy view. Examining the field to determine where the soil had been disturbed was going to be one of the tasks of the cops. Fast forward to mid-October. It was a pleasant sunny weekend. On the first day of the two-day workshop, the two professors did a lecture and lab presentation with the cops. The lab included working with skeletal material to learn how to determine what was human and what was not, how to determine whether human skeletal material was male or female, and how to determine the age of an individual. The cops also learned about archaeological methods and techniques. On the afternoon of the second day, the cops were divided into four groups. Each of us grad students were put in charge of a group. There were four to five cops in each group. My group included the highest ranked individual, a man in my age bracket. As it happened, I was quite a bit older than the other grad students, which turned out to matter. I'm not sure if the cops were tired and wanted to end the workshop early and go home, but the other three groups got pretty rowdy. It didn't take the groups long to find the pits. Although the pits were covered by vegetation, the vegetation differed from that of the surrounding field in quantity and color. Everyone was given a trowel. As I mentioned, the cops had attended a session in how to dig the pit using archeological techniques but the cops at the other pits evidently forgot everything they'd learned. They all began digging with their trowels rather than carefully scraping off the layers of dirt. Their goal seemed to be to see who could get to the bottom of the pit first. I think the fact that they were cops intimidated my fellow grad students. I was not intimidated. I let only one person begin troweling. The first person was, of course, the man in charge of the cops. He immediately began digging rather than troweling. I told him to slow down and carefully scrape. He looked at me with scorn. And then, just as I had planned back in May, his carelessness broke off the top of the deer bone. I yelled, stop, look what you just did. You damaged the evidence. He looked at me furiously, but saw that he had indeed damaged the bone. The other cops in my group sniggered at their boss. I again showed the cops how they were to use the trowel. Everyone then proceeded to follow proper archeological procedures. Mine was the only group that didn't get to the bottom of our pit before the workshop concluded. But we were also the only group that may have learned proper archeological techniques that day. The goal in excavating a site is to carefully find and preserve evidence. The goal is not to win a race to the bottom of a pit. Be a tortoise, not a hare. 
Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.